pressure as negotiations didn't get started until mid-afternoon. The last newsmen knew the talks were still bogged down over the hostages Carrasco wants to take with him on an armored car ride to freedom. Huntsville is Prison City, USA. In the end, many prisoners who die in captivity end up in Huntsville's prison cemetery. But in death, as in life, those who were sentenced to death are marked. The letters EX show for all time that they were executed. Tonight's execution of Carl Wayne Bunchen. Who's paying me? Who's paying me? Somebody over here? Who's over here? Well, it's coming from here. Is somebody making it in here? What's that? Hey, paranormal people, welcome to this episode of Trip Flashback. Me and my boy Rodney, we are doing a little wine sipping and tasting. Actually, what we're doing, we've been meaning to come. How long have been we been trying to do this episode, man? This this trip flashback uh, here. Years? How long has it been? Years. We we've been planning and planning. Something it's always happens. Past two years. We've been trying at, to at least two years. So we're finally, finally getting it done in this this town. It's 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 such a vibrant small town. It, it's more it's more than just a prison town, isn't it? Oh no, yeah, it's so much more. And walk around out here, <laughs> couldn't even tell. It, so. it, it's it, and that's one of the reasons we're doing this first before we actually do the tour. We're actually going to be doing a ghost tour on the mm -hmm. tour bus. But before we do that, they have an event going on. It's a what is it? Wind down and something or other. I don't know. I'll put a link. I'll put it on here anyway. It's a wind down. It's, it's like a sip and stroll yeah. through their downtown, which just goes to show you how vibrant their little downtown area is. We're going to go visit a couple of these antique stores. One of them is haunted from what I hear, right? Yes. So we're going to check that out. We're going to and drink a little wine because it's kind of hot out here. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting a little warm it's, and pretty early in the year. Yes, it is. Hot. Yes, it is. This is an annual event. I strongly recommend you guys coming over here. It's, it's such a cool little charming downtown. And when you get a little wine going, it gets even better. So let's go check it out. Let's walk around and uh, get to know. Get to know because we didn't do this the first time we came and investigated the prison. We're going to do it now. So come along as we do this road trip flashback here in Huntsville, Texas. Let's go get some wine.
Uh, thank you, man. man. Appreciate it. On this side of Mississippi and the second base on the other side yeah, of Mississippi. Yeah, for Victory uh, Ministries. God bless you, brother. Awesome. Got it. Y'all be safe. God bless. Thank you. All right, here we go. We're about to go in the bus. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video of the wind down, <laughs> sip and stroll. That that was a lot of fun. Me and Ronnie had a blast. They have it every year, guys, and I strongly recommend y'all check it out. Hopefully, it will be cooler because it was a uh, it was kind of steamy that day. Not as hot as it is today, but we're about to go into the bus here for this haunted history tour, and we're gonna get this going. It's gonna be fun. Here we go, guys. Robin Logan. I work at Historic Tours of Texas. Uh, we are a small boutique tour company here in Huntsville, Texas. My partner is Dr. Caroline Prim. Uh, she's a retired history professor and we do historic tours around Huntsville and the state of Texas. Excellent. And that's what we're about to do right now. Yep. Right now we're going to do a condensed version of our Haunted Huntsville tour. So we are going to do a, a couple of the highlights and a couple of the stories that we have uh, coming up. So the haunted steamy the haunted steamy Historic. very hot we're in hell right now okay this is texas hell right here there's only two versions hot and hell hot okay <laughs> sometimes late at night from that from that home if you sit on the porch uh, it used to be where they taught uh, piano lessons the uh, Gibbs Powell sisters taught the Powell sisters taught the piano and so late at night when the it's neighbors hear it? the neighbors can hear it and wow. a lot of times when the docent is in the museum by herself very faintly she can hear music playing and she doesn't know if it's the cars out on the road or if it is actually music being played there. Now Huntsville started, uh, was founded way back in uh, 1835 by Pleasant Gray and he founded it because of the location of where the water is. And so we have Founders Park coming up here uh, where the uh, first spring was here in Huntsville. Right in, among these trees right here, you'll see some beautiful statues of Indians. There is a capped spring that was here. And they say they said that once the city decided to hog up this spring, that a lot of Indian spirits started wandering and looking for water because they've now moved with their water system. But if you do come here at night, uh, we don't know if it's the wind blowing through the trees or if it's Indian chanting. So. Oh, wow. um, where they believe Pleasant Gray, the founder of Huntsville's first mercantile store was. And every single place that's been there after that just hasn't really done well. They wow. tore down they tore down and moved the cabin onto the Sam Houston State University's uh, uh, museum and just it's not really prospered since then. I'm gonna direct your attention up here. This is the uh, eighth oldest Masonic Lodge in Texas. Uh, lots of uh, different ritualistic type stuff has gone on in the basement up here. So a lot of people tend to get uh, goosebumps when they come around here. Uh, down in the basement especially, they don't know what it is, but they know that there is something. Uh, I hear a lot of people talk about, they just get this feeling of unease about them. Uh, this is also one of our old theaters here. Uh, Many, many, many plays and, and movies have been shown here, so that's an interesting building as well. Another thing about this courthouse is it burns about three times, so it's, it's kind of unusual for a building to burn, let alone uh, three different times, so they don't know if it's uh, maybe some land 
dispute or something underneath it or not, but that's that's the story we hear about our courthouse, as well as this is where that they would uh, do their hangings. So they had many hangings uh, on the square over here. Slaves were hung here, and uh, if you were a horse. A horse thief, you are not liked in the state of Texas. And so sometimes at night they hear uh, ruckus among the trees. Now I can't find any confirmation on what tree it was uh, that these hangings took place, but uh, they said it's the tree on the corner. So I don't know, there's trees on the corner on, on a couple different sides, so we're not sure which one it is or not. Uh, over here uh, is going to be the uh, blue bonnet and the inch of time uh, antique store. So there's uh, upstairs a rumor that uh, there's a bed and breakfast up there and people could barely spend two or three nights there from all the noise that they hear and the banging. The niche in time, I'm sorry, right next door, uh, one of the owners had let a lady come in to use her restroom. She asked if you had a restroom and she said, oh yes ma'am, it's back in the corner. So they went back to the corner, she went in and the lady went back to doing her merchandising and then she realized after some time had passed that wait a minute, I didn't hear my door open. Maybe I should go check on her. So she went back to the bathroom and the door was locked from the inside. So she knocked on the door and asked, are you okay in there? And there was no response and she got a little worried. So she called the police and when the police got there, the door was locked from the inside and nobody was wow. in there. That was something that the owner of the uh, niche in time can tell you about if you go in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like so, she's wanting to talk about it today. Yeah, I can. <laughs> There's lots of different stories about uh, upstairs in this uh, Simply Second store. It's like their staging area for all of the antiques that come in. And she's had a lot of problems uh, when they get trunks in there, uh, that she would put certain things out of the trunk or certain things uh, near the trunk, and when she would get back the next day, they'd be completely in a different location and move. Right here, we're gonna go down University Avenue. Uh, we have, a, I guess, a private art collector here named George Russell, and he has bought several historic homes and move them down to this property. And some of them are in their original location. And some of them have been moved here just for the act of pres uh, preservation of it. This over here, on this side of the road is gonna be the Josie King home. And this parcel of property was actually owned by Henderson Yoakum, which is the first historian in Texas, as well as Sam Houston, one of Sam Houston's very, very good friends. This yeah. is our Ashford home. And this used to be the uh, funeral. So upstairs, oh. they actually have the white porcelain tub where they would drain the bodies out of. Oh, wow. And when they would bring university students over here when they were doing renovations to it, uh, they would hear noises upstairs. And so they would go upstairs to try to find out what was going on and no one would be there. going to be headed over to the Walls unit. The Walls unit was built before the Civil War and uh, so it's it's an old old building. At the Walls unit they say that the walls talk. There's been a lot of executions here, um, over 300. Um, some of them in the electric chair, some of them through uh, injection. Uh, also uh, there is a clock tower uh, built onto the front of the Walls unit and behind that clock is where uh, morgue used to be for the, the inmates that died here at the walls as well as execution or just regular uh, deaths. When, when did when did the, uh, the, uh, the old section stop? When did he stop using it? That's the section the we investigated of uh, the, the walls unit. There's yeah, like the this bottom hole. part of the, I'm not exactly sure what year that one got decommissioned, uh -huh. but no one's allowed back there except for the warden now. Yeah, and about 10 years ago, we investigated the uh, walls unit. We were allowed to be in there Yes. And uh, y'all need to check out this video while we go and uh, see the rest of the tour. And where are we going? We're going to go back around the Walls unit to see the uh, backside of the hospital and as well as the rodeo uh, 
and then we're gonna go over to Oakwood Cemetery. All right, cool. Check out the video while we go over there and let us know what you think. Focus, uh, use your headphones. It's gonna get the best experience. So right. here we go, right. guys. Is there anybody up here who wishes to make contact with us? If you're still trapped here, can you make a sound? Is there somebody over here? That's my Hey, is somebody coming up here? We can't see you. If you're down there, let us see you. This is your chance to make contact with one of us. Did you hear that? The rain is so noisy, it's hard to tell. It is noisy, but I heard something that wasn't raining. Yeah, I heard that. What was it? Who's painting? Who's painting? Somebody over here? Who is that? Trying to open the door? That's not by us. That's not their Let's go to their floor. Did you want us to come up here? Are you bringing us up here for a reason? Hey, did anybody open the door over there? Who's that? Who's that? Is there somebody downstairs? I heard that I had someone. Who's on the second floor? Whoa, whoa, somebody underneath. No, somebody underneath me. Is there somebody down here? Still, did you see anything? No. I heard that there could be stairs or two. There was something right underneath us, right here. Those aren't pipes, that's coming from underneath us. Don't, nobody hold. Did you hear that? Yeah. Everybody say so. Oh what just happened? Oh, this. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Who was that? Was that you guys? No, that was us. That was loud. Whoa. That's underneath us. Let's go down. Yeah, let's go down. That was right underneath us. your body if you've been in prison or if you died in prison uh, or were executed they will bury you for free here at the uh, Joe Bird Cemetery so there's been numerous accounts of white orbs just walking around 
another uh, interesting person that's been buried here is Chief Santanta of the Kiowa Indians, was accused of breaking many peace treaties uh, against the state of Texas. What they did was imprisoned him in the Walls Unit, and he would go up every morning to the third floor of the hospital in the Walls Unit and would just stare out the window all day long. He would just stare out the window. And up where you see the white tundra kind of looking thing um, is where Chief Santanta's uh, used to be buried. He, uh, he was said to have committed suicide out of the third story window in the Walls Unit. They said he would go out there and stare at it every day and one day eyewitnesses said they saw him fly out of the third story window chanting a Kiowa death song and whipped his arms open and eagle wings went beneath him and they literally saw his soul take flight. The Kiowa say that there is no way a chief would ever take his life. Uh, there's always been a controversy if he was pushed, pulled, or what. So now we're going to go back behind the walls unit. This used to produce and store all the cotton, all the uniforms for the armies, all the uniforms for the uh, prisoners back then. And it was built in 1848. So it was here before the uh, Civil War. And that's why we did get some Civil War soldiers in prison here as well as Union soldiers. We also did another tour with a gentleman that worked for one of the wardens over here and he said that there's some undisclosed very important Civil War artifacts hidden down underneath the uh, wall unit. Oh, cool. So whether that's true or not we haven't seen but someone that works very closely with the warden has seen it. So we're gonna go uh, over to the Oakwood Cemetery. This is Oakwood Cemetery, and this, of course, is Sam Houston's grave. And uh, the lore that we hear about Sam Houston is that Sam and Margaret uh, Houston are not buried together. Margaret is down in Independence, and she's died of the yellow fever. But a lot of people will hear a woman walking through here crying for, calling for Sam Houston. This cemetery has a lot of uh, a lot of things in here. We have Union soldiers as well as Confederate soldiers here, and we also have a cemetery of uh, unknown, um, just unknown, unmarked graves because they don't know who it was. And it could have been just a mass burial for the yellow fever or not. Wow! Hey, Mel. It is so hot in, inside that we're actually coming outside to cool, to off. cool off. 100 degree weather. 108. And not only is it so hot in there, nobody's using the stripper pole. She would stick to it. The There's stripper no pole. Around that you'd My stick to God, it. that's true. <laughs> Let's check out the cemetery, guys. Uh, I've heard about this place, especially the uh, the Jesus statue. So here we go. Let's check it out. It's a, a five-year-old boy, um, Rowley Powell. Uh, Powell was a very prominent family here in Huntsville, and he needed to have a, a tonsillectomy back in the early 1900s and died during the surgery. But they bought and commissioned a bronze sculpture, uh, The Comforting Jesus. And the story is that at night, when it's cold and misty the the 12 o'clock at night the comforting jesus will co close his arms over the child's grave to help comfort him all right guys we're back from the tour from the cemetery out of the heat 
Normally that bus has AC, but my God, today it wasn't working. It was a little hot. Robin, thank you so much for taking the time You're and welcome. sacrificing the heat to oh, give us the tour. Just uh, be before we wrap it up, quick details. How do we, people find you? How, how often do they have the tours? What kind of tours okay. can they expect to, to take? <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Okay, so they can find us on Facebook. Uh, they can find us on our webpage, Historic Tours of Texas. Uh, we do these tours all the time. So uh, right now we're just doing them um, as custom tours when people want to come up here and do the, ha uh, the haunted tours. Give us a call. Our number's on our webpage. Google search Historic Tours of Texas. It's historictoursoftexas.com is where most of our pre built tours are we also do custom tours so just give us a call and we can get you on anytime pretty much sounds good I, I, either way i'm going to include all that information down below in the description i strongly recommend it e even in the heat it was a lot of fun i can't imagine when the ac's kicking and the music's playing and the stripper poles being used <laughs> it's gonna be fun but you know yeah. very informative very educational the history around the town is just amazing to find out about the history and especially for us the haunted history which is really cool so thank you so much robin and guys me and uh mel are going to get together and we're going to kind of analyze the footage of what we caught remember you are our fellow investigators so join in let us know what you think all right here we go All right, guys, here we are at the uh, City Hall City Cafe Hall. and Pie Bar. And the food's good. It's really pretty. It's, it's cool in here. The margaritas are excellent. Excellent. Good, good service, so strongly recommend it. Uh, what do you think of the the bus tour? Except for the heat. Except which, for the heat, I didn't have, I like the tour. It's a rare event. This normally wouldn't happen. Oh. Usually, and me and Ronnie have been on the bus before, and it was nice and cool. The music was jam. Oh, you know what? How informative. It was a good tour. Uh, Robin, very, very educated in the history of the town. Uh, just the town itself, how picturesque is it with all it's the hills? It's beautiful. And, oh, it's I've never beautiful... been around the college area before. Oh, I know. I've never been on the grounds. Well, we didn't explore the town the first time we came. Mm -mm. And we went to go investigate the Walls Unit. Now, we had a whole full investigation. We heard footsteps and knockings. So we really want to talk about three main events at the the, uh, the old walls unit when we investigated. The first one was a growl that we heard in one of the uh, cells. And uh, you can probably hear it without, without headphones, but I would strongly uh, recommend wearing it. But it was one of those rooms where I walked into, one of the cells I walked into, and uh, I heard a growl. And it was audibly, I could hear it. It wasn't just when we went back and watched the video. Uh, to be honest with you, I can't explain it. I don't know where it came from. I know it wasn't me. I was the only one in that cell mm -hmm. around me. Nobody else was around me, so it wasn't a, a stomach or somebody just grunting. But, but the uh, fact that you heard it with your ears and picked it up on I heard it with my ears. is very good. Yeah, and, and I, I think catch. I had uh, another sensitive at the time that was with us, and I forget her oh. name. It's been so long. Uh, so if you watch this, I apologize. But I think she picked up on it too. I think she heard it as well. There was another part of the prison that we, we split up in groups that we went back to, and we knew that the pipes over there made noises. We were told that. We were told that it, they bang, they clank, but the thing is, it, it was crazy. We knew it was the pipes, but it sounded like it was more than just the pipes. Or somebody banging on the, the cells. Now, it could have been the acoustics, maybe it was about but yeah, I, it's like what four tiers high i think yes it was like four tiers high the we cell block was long so even though we knew what they told us the pipes they clank it still had us chasing the sounds because it really sounded like it was coming from some of the cells until so you go there and then it's coming from where you just and then it, it, exactly i mean listen to it it sounds like people are clanking on the gel cell Who was that? Is that you guys? No, that was us. That was loud. Whoa, that's underneath us. Okay, so yeah, you do got to keep in mind, especially going into the next clip, that it is, it's still a working 
prison. So there's another section that we didn't even get close to. But we never heard anything. Yeah, they, they would not let us get close to it because it's an active prison. We, but as far as the prison life goes, we didn't yeah, hear we didn't anything, hear like anything. That. No, no so, banging, no yelling, no screaming, no drama, no nothing. So we had the static cam footage that we set up, where you can audibly hear at the bottom of the cell block the, stairs. Yep, a bunch of people, a bunch of it sounds. It sounds like, like inmates yelling. Right? It sounds like it's a tape recorder inside an active cell block. And we never heard any of that. No. Not like that. No, we didn't no. hear yelling, yelling, and shouting. It sounded and, chaotic, but it, we didn't hear it with our ears. We didn't hear that at all. But again, we do have to keep in mind it is a working prison, but we have to be honest, we did not hear that. We didn't hear anything. We didn't that hear had to any do with of it. that. Yeah, so you let us know what you think. You know, this that's what we caught. We're not saying it's the spirits of old prisoners or or, or if it, but it, it or, could be. But it could be. Or, or it could be uh, a residual. A residual. It could be residual haunting. It's an old, old, old jail built before the Civil War, correct? That's what she said. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Beautiful prison, though. Really, really cool. Really I have to cool. tell you, in all of our years of doing this, of every place that we've gone, that is my number one favorite spot. Absolutely. To, to, to include a prison in our in our resume, how cool is that? Especially you know? death row, execution death row, chamber of, execution, of Texas. Yes, And we absolutely. were there. We were there exploring, investigating the place. But anyway, so guys, uh, we hope you enjoyed this haunted history tour of the bus i strongly recommend you guys take that bus tour even they do wine tours so there's a lot of tours that they would give you and this there's so much to see here we in could just spend seven or eight hours just in the cemetery so you guys tell us what we missed now we're coming back we are and we're, coming back. And, we're, and we're bringing you with us yeah you're definitely coming with us but we're not going to tell you just yet where we're investigating we're going to save it up, up until the time that it launches Gotta but you guys all you guys are going to enjoy it but in the meantime if you're from the area let us know what you think of, of this uh of this episode and if there's any places that we missed any places that we should go hit let us know yeah, in the comments can, below if you can think of some place that's really good though that that we need to know about yes let us know absolutely we'll absolutely go check it out for y'all let yeah, you know what it, if it's you, on it or not on it if you have more stories if you live on the campus and you've seen these orbs that Robin was telling us about, you know, let us know what stories you have, what experiences you have if you are, are staying over here in the, on campus, you know. Or even in anywhere in the town, pretty much, it seems like. Absolutely. So, so many, There's so, so many, many historical, haunted, historic places. And, this place is so much more than just a prison town, and as have, I had mentioned before. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed it, man. I strongly recommend coming out here to visit Huntsville. So many events. The wine down was so much fun. Had a blast in the wine, the different Texas wines, and, and then exploring all the little shops. It's just so cool to be inside those old historic buildings. Come shopping, spend a weekend. It's just a perfect day trip. Take the Haunted History Tour or, or any of the, the historic Texas tours. Completely worth it. Yeah, if you get on the party bus, make sure you tell Dr. Krim and Robin that we said hi. Yes. And, and yeah, and absolutely, Robin, thank you so much. Dr. Krim, thank you so much. You guys are treasures and with all the history. And we can't wait to work with y'all. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is just the beginning. And and we want you to guys to like, sh share, and subscribe. But definitely share because, as I always mention, you know, we're doing this to help the places that we go to, and we're doing our small part to keep history alive. Just like Dr. Krim and Robin. Even if it's not alive anymore. Even if it's not alive. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. And we'll see you on the next road trip because we're going to do an investigation here in Huntsville. Peace. Peace. Whoa, actually, we forgot one thing. I, I slapped y'all for no reason. We forgot one thing. Save the bats. Save the bats. The, Huntsville, the, Texas. Huntsville Bat Society. Help save the bats. If you could contact our state representatives, contact our city, contact Texas Parks and Wildlife and TDCJ to help us save our Huntsville bat colony of over 1.2 million bats. And it's a maternity colony. Come see it. Feel it and smell it come watch it Huntsville Texas it's the place to be it is an awesome experience I, I, I've been there it is so cool I never knew they had bats here it is worth saving especially if you live in the area save it help save it you know and uh, help raise awareness but uh, it is such an, a cool attraction 
just to see all those bats and, and to be so close to it. Yeah. That you're, you're practically right there. Yeah, you can smell the guano, but you know, it, it's just part of the experience. It's really cool. Save the bats. Save Not, the bats. Hashtag save the bats. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Thank Guys, you. do your part. Save the bats. <laughs> Shining bright and it's going my way.